Do you work all day? Are you busy shuffling kids and crazy schedules? Do you like to go out and party all weekend after working long hours all week? These are just a few of the questions you need to ask yourself before committing to a new puppy friend. If you are considering a new puppy or you are already committed and the little bundle of joy is currently chewing on your sock or peeing on your living room rug, or they are coming tomorrow and you are freaking out, panic is setting in, and you needed this information yesterday, I invite you to hang out with me for a while as we discuss bringing a cute, cuddly, warm, and fuzzy new puppy into your life. Hello and welcome to the Pets Weekly Podcast, and thank you so much for joining me. My name is Lindy, and I am a certified dog trainer, behavior consultant, professional pet sitter, and founder of Sunshine's Pet Services. This is the Dog Training 101 series, how to train a puppy and new puppy preparation, and we are here to talk about puppies, of course, and if you, your family, and your lifestyle are a good fit for a puppy. This is not a decision to be taken lightly. I'm talking about a 10 to 20 year relationship through the good, the bad, life changes, health problems, emergencies, and everything in between. Most of the puppy calls I get consist of someone ready to rip all of their hair out and they haven't slept in two weeks and they've beyond had it. On a scale of 0 to 10, they are at a 20, and unfortunately, most pet parents do not reach out to a dog behavior professional for help until stress and sleep deprivation are at an all-time high, and they are considering taking the puppy to a shelter or rehoming the puppy through social media. The thing that always gets me is that the complaints from the pet parent are all very normal puppy behaviors. Puppies are full of energy, they chew on everything, they have accidents, they throw tantrums when they need a nap, they harass elderly pets in the home, they bark, they cry, they don't have boundaries or manners, you can't take your eyes off of these little cuties for a second, and They tend to drive all of the humans a little crazy if the humans don't do the research and know what they are getting into. And that is really what it comes down to, thinking about the animal more than yourself and putting in the work to ensure they are happy, healthy, and safe, and emotionally and psychologically balanced. The majority of pet parents do not take the time to research how to raise a puppy how to enrich their lives, how to make them happy and healthy. They think about what the puppy will do for them, not what they can offer a puppy. When you bring a puppy or any animal into your life, your life is no longer just about you. Your life is not just yours anymore. You have a precious little creature that is depending on you. You will have to compromise and sacrifice You will have to alter your behavior and your life for the betterment of your new fuzzy friend. And animals are for life, not for entertainment or when you have time. Animals are your friends, partners, family, nothing less. Animals are every day, all day, for better and for worse, till death do you part. Now, to understand how people get themselves into these situations, we must peel back the layers of our puppy friends so that we can wrap our minds around what is going on in their brains and why they do the things that they do. Just a quick disclaimer, any generalizations that I make about breeds, ages, temperaments, or behaviors are simply that, just generalizations. These are things that are typically seen. In no way do these generalizations cover every puppy and family. Everyone is going to have a different situation, and just like people, dogs are individuals. 
They all have their own likes, dislikes, fears, personalities, etc. To understand how to care for puppies and raise a puppy into a balanced adult dog, we have to go back to when a puppy is born. Training a puppy and setting up your puppy for success starts with understanding your puppy physically, cognitively, emotionally, and psychologically. When puppies are born, they can't see, smell, or hear, and the most excitement they experience in a day besides nursing from their mother is sleeping. They do a lot of sleeping. Takes a ton of energy to be that cute. These fuzzy little creatures are truly reliant on their mother 100% of the time, just like human babies. Around two to four weeks, these little hamsters magically turn into puppies. They start using the incredible senses that they have been given. Dogs have impeccable hearing and their noses are extremely impressive. As they grow, their senses just keep getting stronger. During two to four weeks, their personalities can be seen as they make friends with their siblings and build a relationship with their mother. Mama is providing milk to her babies and stimulation that the puppies need to eliminate, aka pee and poop. Now after the four week mark, puppies can eliminate on their own and they start to get a little spunky. A four-week-old puppy is up and moving. Not gracefully, of course, but they are up and moving. They are exploring their surroundings and may start to vocalize and show excitement by wagging their tail and barking. They are still far from being coordinated, but they have a desire to interact with each other and the environment around them. They are curious, silly, and downright adorable. Around five weeks to eight weeks, puppies begin flourishing and spreading their little puppy wings and fluttering around like a new butterfly or a baby bird. They are so happy, full of life, living in the moment, and they have no idea what they are doing. They are just going with the flow and discovering who they are while every day they are completing new milestones. Every day, Mama is teaching her babies how to be proper puppies. She sets boundaries and teaches her pups how to navigate these physical and psychological boundaries. Siblings are so important to the development of a puppy. Baby brothers and sisters teach each other and learn together. This speeds up the learning process because they are doing it together. They get comfort from knowing that they have each other. They watch one another and learn how to do things, and sometimes one mischievous puppy can teach all of his or her siblings how to get in trouble when mom isn't looking. Additionally, these important relationships are a safety blanket, just like being with their mom. But as the puppies continue to grow, Mama starts to wean her puppies and does her best to teach them how to be independent and self-sufficient. Up until now, puppies are pretty carefree. Sure, things can startle them, but typically they don't dwell and shut down. They just brush the fear right off their fuzzy little shoulders. And this takes us into 8 to 16 weeks, which is a very sensitive and critical time in their lives. The number one focus needs to be on creating and managing positive experiences. When something scary happens or is going to happen, you have to set your puppy up for success. You need to be kind, considerate, consistent, and calm for your puppy's sake. Adding your anxiety Fear and negative energy is not going to help the situation, so it's best to keep things positive. When you use items such as a vacuum cleaner or a blender, it is important to slowly introduce the item to your puppy. This is true for adult dogs that are new additions as well. You want to be cheerful and use a soft and kind voice when speaking to your puppy. Be patient and understanding. 
they just got here, they are still trying to figure everything out. And don't make a big deal about items in the home that may or may not be scary. Overly soothing a dog when they aren't even scared or anxious can actually cause a dog to become anxious or fearful because they feel your energy. They don't necessarily understand why you feel the way you do, but they will pick up on what you are feeling, and this will influence their behavior. Some dogs are hypersensitive to their pet parents' emotions and the energy around them. For these dogs, it is even more important that you are aware of what you are projecting into the environment. Try your best to be self-aware when training a puppy and take your time. Step away and take a deep breath if you need to at any time during training. Your energy is felt by your dog and you want all training to be light, positive, and enjoyable. Always remember, you can't lie to a dog. They really do know how you are feeling. Some puppies and adult dogs are afraid of new noises initially, while others really couldn't care less. Watch your puppy's body language and look for lip licking, yawning, cowering, tail in between the legs, lowering of the head, ears back, or your puppy giving you the side eye where their eyes get bigger and appear intense and you may see the whites of their eyes. These are stress signals, and it is important to learn canine body language before bringing a new fuzzy friend into your home. You want to make everything fun and enjoyable. Training and learning together should be fun. Puppies look to you for guidance and reinsurance. They are no longer with their mom or siblings, so they turn to you and you become the new security blanket until they build confidence and learn who they are, and it is your job to introduce your puppy to the world in a safe and healthy way. It sounds like a lot of responsibility, and that's because it is. This is a little life that is in your hands, a living and breathing innocent little creature that relies on you for everything. That is why it is so important to be sure you are educated before bringing a puppy into your life. And speaking of responsibility, providing your puppy and adult dog with quality health care is vital to your new family member's well-being and longevity. That brings us to vet visits and medical care. Are you at a place in your life where you can financially support an animal and provide them with all of the care that they need throughout their life? I recommend to every pet parent that brings a puppy home that they begin desensitizing their puppy to vet visits as soon as puppies can safely do so with the right vaccines being completed. It is important to speak with your vet about which vaccines your puppy needs before they can go to a park, a group training class, or a pet store, for example. Also, taking your puppy to the vet just to say hi to the people at the front desk is a great way to make car rides and going to the vet enjoyable. If your puppy has a good experience where he gets treats and people play with him and pet him and tell him how cute he is, this is going into his long-term memory and it will carry throughout his life. These positive experiences are vital to making everyone's lives easier in the future. Unless you're walking, there is going to be a car ride involved to get your puppy and future adult dog to the vet. Car rides need to take place when you are not going to the vet first. Start with just sitting in the car and short car rides down the street and back. This is a great time to teach your puppy how to use a safety harness attached to a seatbelt or how to be happy in a crate during a car ride. Letting your puppy free roam around the car is extremely dangerous. It is dangerous for any size animal, but puppies are very small and fragile. It is best to start responsible safety practices in the car from day one. Praise and reward for calm and curious behavior. 
When your puppy is vaccinated, you can go to parks or trails that allow leashed dogs. These adventures are also a bonding experience for both of you. Desensitizing your dog and socializing your dog is a lifelong commitment. You want your puppy to know that car rides aren't a big deal and that good things happen when you go for car rides. Socializing with new friends, human and animal, should be fun and a safe experience. When you take your puppy out into the world, use a well-fit harness or collar that is slip-proof and comfortable. Also use a standard leash. In the beginning, I recommend puppy parents to start with a harness because puppies do not come out of the womb knowing not to pull and choke themselves and make themselves cough. So it's best to protect their trachea and their neck from injury and start with a harness until you start to work with them better on having more self-control during your walks. Be aware of your surroundings, stay off your phone, and do not put headphones in while walking your dog no matter where you are. You need to stay present and vigilant to ensure your dog stays safe and healthy. In a split second, a dog can eat something that could make them sick. Another dog could get loose from another pet parent. Anything can happen and your dog is depending on you for safety. Keep treats with you or a favorite toy to praise for good behavior or help ease scary or overwhelming situations. Your puppy will require several vet visits during his younger years. There are things that you must do in the early stages of life that will keep your new fuzzy family member from suffering needlessly down the road and will extend your dog's life. It is important to have dependable transportation or public transportation that allows your dog to go on the bus so that your dog can get to vet appointments and to ensure your pet has a way to get to an ER if something bad were to happen. Some public transit allow dogs on leash or in a crate and some do not. Some also have weight limits, so it is important to find out what they allow or don't allow before bringing your puppy home. Your puppy needs to have a physical exam done by a veterinary professional of your choosing after you bring your new friend home. Be sure to bring any paperwork that you received when you purchased or adopted the puppy to your vet. I always recommend to new puppy parents to make that visit within one to two weeks of your new puppy arriving home. This is to ensure that your puppy is healthy and establishes a new and good relationship with the veterinarian and the vet techs that you will be seeing throughout your dog's life. Even if you were told the puppy was dewormed and fully vetted, I strongly recommend you do a fecal exam with your vet and a full physical exam at the least. Whenever I say fully vetted, especially speaking for a puppy, some little creature that is new to the world, we want to make sure that the puppy has been fully dewormed. Sometimes one deworming isn't enough, especially when they're very little. So we want to make sure that the puppy is fully dewormed. And also included in a puppy being fully vetted is that a professional veterinarian assesses the dog from head to toe. And this is checking the skin, the eyes, the mouth, the ears. We want to make sure that the puppy is at the correct weight for their age. We want to make sure that the puppy is up to date on vaccines that are appropriate for their age. And we want to also assess any types of um, concerns that the vet may see that somebody with the average eye may miss. So your vet may come across, you know, a little, a little rash um, that could be indicative of maybe an allergy. 
uh, they may notice that the dog's nails are very long and that they need cut. Um, they can check their mouth, make sure that their teeth are coming in the way that they should be, that there's no injury in there. Um, just little things like that, things that we may not think about, um, that's the vet's job. And we want to make sure that we're giving our puppy the opportunity to start off on the right paw, make sure that they're healthy and that they have done a full physical exam and one thing that you can do to make sure that your puppy has been fully dewormed is a fecal test. And after you speak with your vet, all you have to do is drop off your dog's poop and they take care of the rest. And worms and parasites in the stomach and intestines can wreak havoc on your puppy's body if they are not treated quickly. Even if you trust the person or the rescue that gave you the puppy, it is critical to have your own vet make sure that the puppy did receive the care you were told was given. And this is for your puppy's benefit and it will give you peace of mind that your puppy is healthy and fully vetted. During your vet visit, ask the vet to microchip your puppy. They will provide you with the microchip company's information Call the company and give them your phone number, name, and address so that your microchip number is registered to you. Microchips save lives. It's an easy way to ensure that your dog will make it back to you if they go missing and are scanned for a microchip. All rescues, shelters, animal control facilities, and vet clinics have microchip readers. Things happen, doors are left open, and emergencies happen. Microchipping is an easy and simple way to bring your dog back home where he belongs. It is important to get your puppy used to wearing a collar and tags with the chip info on it and get a name tag with your number on it as well. Tags are important and they work well for returning a dog to their home. However, collars can be removed and so can tags and they break if the dog gets caught on something. It's best to do both to cover all of your bases. It's a scary world out there and your dog needs to be able to get back to you if you are ever separated. Spaying and neutering is one of the most important things you can do for your puppy. You will be removing the risk for a variety of reproductive cancers easing behavioral issues such as escaping to find a dog to mate with, marking in the home and indoors in public places, balancing some psychological issues, hormonal issues, and so much more. Never let a breeder or anyone tell you to wait to spay or neuter your dog. They are ready to be spayed or neutered when they are a certain weight. Your vet will be more than happy to tell you when your puppy is ready to be spayed or neutered. The U.S. is killing millions of healthy dogs and cats every single year simply because there are not enough homes and not enough pet parents are being responsible and spaying and neutering their pets. There are just too many animals and not enough homes. Any reputable, ethical, and knowledgeable vet wants to save innocent lives from needless death and wants to keep pets out of shelters. We have a pet overpopulation crisis in the U.S. that is simply not talked about nearly as much as it needs to be. Awareness is how we advocate for animals and it is the first step to educating the public. Also, speak to your vet about heartworm prevention and flea and tick prevention. Additionally, I strongly recommend purchasing your heartworm and flea and tick and parasite prevention from your vet or with a prescription from your vet if you'd like to purchase online. Go with the prescription products every time. They are tested and proven to work. Heartworm is no joke. It will kill a healthy dog. No matter where you live, there are mosquitoes, and that is how a dog can become heartworm positive. All it takes is one bite from a mosquito. It is painful for the dog and the pet parent watching the dog suffer and go through months of treatment. I use HeartGuard and I never miss a month. It is just something you have to do 
year-round to keep your dog safe no matter where you live. It is a chewable treat and it's easy to give. Fleas and ticks and other parasites are awful for our four-legged friends. Ticks carry serious health risks and I don't know about you, but I don't want my precious dog covered in fleas or with Lyme disease. Additionally, there are so many parasites and different kinds of parasites all over the U.S. that can infest your dog. Brevecto is also a chewable treat that you only have to give once every three months. Thankfully, you're not having to pour a chemical solution down your dog's shoulder blades, which is nice. This takes care of all kinds of creepy crawlies on your dog that will make their way into your home. There are a variety of chewable prescriptions that can protect your dog from fleas and ticks besides Brevecto. Your vet can give you all the details on prescription products to keep your dog safe year-round. When your puppy is vaccinated and healthy, puppy classes are a fantastic next step. This is a chance for your puppy to safely meet other puppies in a controlled and positive environment. Find a trainer that uses positive reinforcement and has experience teaching group classes. Classes are amazing opportunities for your puppy to see other people and puppies in a new environment while learning and bonding with you. Even if you have a private trainer, I can't recommend enough how important puppy classes are. There are so many benefits, including getting the opportunity to meet other pet parents that may be going through similar challenges and experiences. I always encourage my clients to take their puppy to a weekly puppy class. It is fun, informative, and excellent for socializing your puppy. Above all, it strengthens your relationship with your new friend. One of the top challenges that new puppy parents face is potty training. The rule of thumb that I have found to be useful and effective is the month equals one hour plus one rule. For example, for a three-month-old puppy, typically the puppy needs to pee every four hours. So each month is one hour, and then you add one hour. Every puppy is different, of course, but this is a good place to start. Puppies, like human babies, have small bladders. They do not have experience holding their bladders either and they simply cannot hold it as long as an adult dog can. Every time a puppy drinks water, eats, plays, or is stimulated in some fashion, this increases the likelihood of a puppy having to pee, poop, or both. Now I would like to address what to do when your puppy has an accident in the home, chews your favorite pair of shoes, or eats your kid's doll head and you find it in their poop later, and this goes for adult dogs as well. When you scold your puppy or adult dog by yelling, intimidating them, or physically harming them, the only thing you are teaching them is that you are unpredictable, untrustworthy, and unkind, and you instantly damage your relationship. Coming home to find an accident on the floor from an hour ago or five minutes ago and scolding your dog is confusing to your dog and, again, you're just damaging your relationship. Nothing productive or positive is happening. Dogs live in the moment. They don't know what your problem is. They just know that you are scary and aggressive. Rubbing a dog's face in their own urine or feces is abuse. Screaming and hitting your dog is abuse, period. If you wouldn't want it done to you, don't do it to your dog. It's not cool. It's not cute. Don't be that person. Dogs deserve better. When your dog does something that you don't like, show them what you would like them to do instead. Make a big deal about when they do something good. Don't waste your time making a big deal about when they do something bad. You're just drawing attention to what you don't want them to do. What you need to do is draw attention to the good things that they do. Give them positive reinforcement. Your dog is going to learn so much faster that way and you're going to have a better relationship. 
change their mind by kindly and patiently influencing their behavior. If a puppy pees on the floor and you are there and you see it, don't say a word and pipe down your annoyance. Your dog can feel that. It's a puppy. It's not that big of a deal. You can clean it up later. Take your puppy outside to a pee area and walk them around for several minutes. If they pee or poop, praise them as soon as they are done and give them a treat or toy that they love. Make sure you use the word good potty or go potty, go pee pee, whatever word you prefer. Just keep it consistent so that they can learn what that word means. How is a dog supposed to learn if you don't show them what to do? Making a big deal about your dog doing something that comes natural to them is unproductive and it just damages the bond you have with your dog. Be a good pet parent and be kind. Your puppy will learn things so much faster when you simply show them what you would like them to do and praise them for it. They will be more inclined to behave in that way because they know that it pleases you and it gives them a reward. Dogs are natural people pleasers. They want you to be happy. To get a jump on potty training, have a strict schedule of when they go out to potty from day one. The more times they go out, the same door to the same area, on a walk, and pee or poop, the more they are going to do it. Set them up for success, use praise, and be patient. Crate training is something that some people are strongly for or strongly against. I am someone that falls in the middle. It is not a yes, you need to do this, or no, don't do it at all. It depends on you, your home, your routine, your family, and most importantly, your dog. Something to keep in mind is that your puppy wants to be with you, so keeping the crate in the living room or a highly populated area during the day with the door open um, and then in the bedroom at night is a good way to help them feel comfortable. Some dogs prefer a blanket partially covering the crate to give it more of a den feel and other dogs don't care either way. Crates come in metal, plastic, wood, fabric, and other materials. You have to see what works best for your dog. A nightlight or a sound machine can be very beneficial, especially for new members of the family. Always introduce a new puppy or adult dog to a crate slowly. Feed meals inside, leave the door open all the time during the day, put a comfy bed in there, favorite toys, put snacks in there, or a favorite bone. It is not fair to assume a dog or puppy will be fine with it and lock them in there for hours overnight or while you are at work. You need to slowly desensitize your puppy or adult dog over a period of time, and that time is based on when the dog feels comfortable. It is never to be used as a punishment for any reason, and it needs to be a safe and happy place. Having said all of that, at the end of the day, it is what the puppy prefers. Some puppies do very well in crates, and some do not. Some take longer than others to feel comfortable, and some will never become comfortable. You have to be kind, patient, and compassionate. You do not have to train a puppy to sleep in a crate, stay in a crate. There is no real right way to do it. It's based on what the puppy prefers and what makes the puppy comfortable. You can crate puppies into their adulthood for their entire life. Some are crated only while they are young or while they're persons at work. And then some are not crated at all. It may just not be necessary. It really just depends on the puppy. There are so many ways you can go about crate training. It is not black and white. You can limit access to one room while you are away. You can have them in a puppy pen at night, etc. There are other ways to limit your puppy's access to your home if he does not like the crate. Some puppies and adult dogs do fine without any kind of confinement. Baby gates can be a great tool as well. Just because your friend Susan 
is telling you that she crate trains all of her dogs doesn't mean that you have to. I think something that a lot of people need to remember is that every dog is an individual and you do not have control over every aspect of their life. You may have had Rottweilers, for example, or a Golden Retrievers your whole life. Every single one of them you crate trained. And you get a puppy, same breed, Rottweiler, Golden Retriever, they hate the crate. They don't want to be in the crate. It's all based on that unique dog. Every single dog is different no matter what their gender is, their age, their temperament, their breed. They're all completely different. They're going to have preferences, likes, dislikes, fears, and so on that you have zero control over. This is not to say that you can't influence your preferences with positive reinforcement. You certainly can, but every animal has a right to have boundaries and preferences that you aren't necessarily in control of. Another common challenge that puppy parents face is teething. From 12 to 24 weeks, the baby teeth start going away and in come the permanent teeth. What does this mean? It means your puppies need to chew, chew, and then chew some more. Provide your puppy with a variety of toys that they can chew and play with. In the beginning, you want toys of all shapes and sizes, different sounds, textures, and materials. It takes time to learn who your new puppy is. They don't even know who they are yet, so you're learning together. It is best not to leave the same toys on the floor all the time, since you don't want your puppy to get bored with them. They need to have options. If you want your cute living room pillows to survive, you really have to put time and effort into finding the right toys for your new puppy. I recommend rotating toys on a daily basis. This keeps the toys fun and interesting. Keep toys nearby at all times. If your puppy starts getting wild and maybe is a little overly tired, they can get mouthy. If a puppy gets overly stimulated, they can become mouthy. Your puppy can become mouthy at any time for any reason. When a puppy is teething, they will be uncomfortable and chew on anything and everything to relieve pain. It is good to have a toy that you can put in his mouth when your fingers or clothes turn into a chew toy. Redirect the behavior, do not punish or yell, Dogs are supposed to chew just like cats are supposed to scratch. It's what they do. So it's your responsibility to offer your dog toys that they not only like, but are a higher value than chewing on your brand new shoes or your child's favorite blanket. Another way to be a responsible pet parent is to desensitize your new family member to being brushed, bathed, wearing a collar with tags, walking on a leash, having their nails dremeled, brushing their teeth or using dental wipes, ear cleaning, etc. You need to be able to care for your puppy throughout their life. If you set yourself up for success in the beginning when you first bring them home, your life and your puppy's life are going to be way less stressful and less traumatic. Before your new puppy arrives, you must puppy-proof your life. You need to think like a puppy to train your puppy. You need to become a puppy. And it may sound silly, but seriously, you have to get down to their level and assess your home and your life. If able, literally get down on your hands and knees and look at where your cords are connected to your electronics. Go in each room and think, if I wanted to get into trouble, what can I sink my razor sharp puppy teeth into? What can I jump on to eat the remote off the coffee table? Or can I just climb the coffee table and eat all of your pretzels? These are genuine concerns. And if you haven't noticed yet, puppies are a lot of work. I have had pet parents tell me that their puppy is harder to raise than their child was. Bringing a puppy into your home is no joke, but it is also very rewarding. You get to watch this little creature grow and find themselves. You get to influence their life and form the dog that they become. 
However, not all puppies are created equal. Neither is every breed, and breed is important. It is not everything, but it is important. You can't truly predict how a puppy is going to turn out no matter what breed. But in one litter, you can have a variety of very different personalities and energy levels. This goes for every breed as well. The breeds of puppies I get the most calls about are breeds that were originally bred to work. And not just work, but work hard. German Shepherds, Terriers, Border Collies, Belgian Malinois, etc. There are certain breeds of dog that not the average person should have. They just shouldn't. They have no business with specific breeds of dog. They just won't have the ability or the desire to give them the exercise that they need, to provide the mental stimulation that they need. They may not even have the space that is needed to have a breed that is a strong breed that requires a lot of exercise and a lot of mental stimulation. And at the end of the day, it's not fair to the dog at all. They didn't ask for you to buy them from a breeder or to adopt them from a rescue. They didn't, they didn't ask for that. What's best for the dog is what needs to be the main focus. So just because you like the look of a certain breed doesn't mean that you have any business having that breed. There's certain breeds of dogs that I think are just absolutely gorgeous. Would I ever have them? Absolutely not. I don't have acres for them to run. I don't have a job for them to do eight hours a day. I just don't. So I know that Yes, I love those breeds. I love working with them. I love, you know, looking at pictures and videos of them, but I know that I wouldn't be able to provide what they need, so it wouldn't be fair for me to get a dog like that. And then these people that just go ahead and do it anyways, regardless of what is best for the dog, are then wondering why their dog is tearing down their drywall and constantly barking and driving them absolutely insane. And it's because they're not happy. It's because they're not being fulfilled. It is because they are not in the right home. So it's important to do your research and be selfless before you go down the road of adopting or purchasing a dog. Whichever route you go, you have to do your research and make sure that you're picking the right breed or mix of breed, the right age, the right temperament, the right size. You really have to put in the time and energy into researching, talking to professionals, getting professional opinions, and making sure that you do it right. Because this is an animal's life. And that animal deserves to have a very good life. Just because we don't utilize dogs as much as we used to in the ways that we used to does not mean that the needs of the breeds have changed. They just haven't. I will be doing dog breed and cat breed deep dive videos where we will get into the nooks and crannies of each breed. And when choosing a puppy, and if you know the breed or the mix in any way, you really have to do your research for the sake of the dog, your sake, and your family's sake. Another thing to keep in mind as we're going into discussing families and making good decisions for your dog, for their future, wanting your child to grow up with a puppy is great and all. It really is, but there is a lot more to consider before bringing a puppy into your family life. If you think your child is going to be in charge of all of the puppy's care and training, you are setting your puppy and your child up for failure. I cannot tell you how many times I have heard, my kid is going to learn responsibility by feeding and bathing the puppy and taking the puppy out to go potty and training the puppy. This way of thinking has landed countless puppies in animal shelters. 
these are just not reasonable expectations and the parents are always disappointed. Your child is a child and you are an adult. It is your responsibility to teach your child how to properly and safely care for an animal so that when they grow up, they know how to do it. As the parent, you will be carrying the most weight and you will be the one waking up in the middle of the night to take your puppy out to pee. Your child can observe and be by your side through it all, but taking care of an animal is a struggle for adults, let alone a young child that is still learning to take care of themselves. You certainly do not want a child walking the dog alone. So many things can go wrong. Your child may lose interest in the new puppy as time goes on. It happens all the time. From day one until your dog's last day on this earth, he or she is in your hands and it is your responsibility. Not scared yet and think you will be a good fit for a new puppy? Rescue your new puppy. I have already told you that the U.S. is killing millions of adoptable pets every year. So instead of adding to the problem and paying for a breeder's next vacation or a new iPhone, consider adoption. When you save a life, you are opening a space for another animal that desperately needs a good home. There are so many breed-specific rescues and animal shelters with wonderful fuzzy little creatures awaiting their forever home. So this video has been a little scary at times and probably more than a bit overwhelming, but a video about puppies can't be complete without a good story about a puppy. This story is about a golden retriever puppy who became a hero on February 10th, 2022. At 2.30 a.m. in a suburb located in Charlotte County, Florida, Yvonne was laying in bed trying to sleep when her six-month-old puppy Skipper was becoming more and more agitated. At the time, some family was visiting, and Yvonne associated a change in routine and some added stress with Skipper's unusual behavior. However, Yvonne pulled herself out of bed and sleepily walked to the window to investigate her surroundings, thinking that maybe something could be going on that she was unaware of. As she pulled back the blind, she was shocked to see flames from her grill going up the side of her house. Yvonne said the following to news station WINK, quote, I got up and I just pulled the blinds open a little and I just saw my whole grill area just shooting up in flames, end quote. Thanks to Skipper, Yvonne was able to get everyone out of the house. The fire department arrived shortly after. The grill was destroyed and the side of her house was blackened. The fire would have continued into the house within a matter of minutes if the fire department did not get there when it did. The house would have quickly been engulfed had it not been for Skipper and Yvonne listening to her puppy's change in behavior. Yvonne went on to tell WINK, quote, Had Skipper had not, you know, alerted me, I don't know when I would have known. He is a hero, and we all feel pretty fortunate that he was here. End quote. If you have questions or need advice and are interested in virtual dog training sessions and behavior consultations with me, please visit Sunshine's Pet Services dot com and click on the virtual dog training button at the top of the page. You can find this information and more in the episode's description section. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe on YouTube and follow the podcast on all podcasting platforms for new episodes every week where I bring you all things pets. And until we meet again, I challenge you to wake up in the morning and ask yourself how you can make your dog's life a little bit better every day. Thank you for joining me and I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.